Okay. So I've got my pumpkins. All right. Yep, I'm going to I'm going to keep my orientation portrait. All right, and I'm going to work with I got to grab a, a sheet of paper. your um, oil pastels, definitely grab some. It's over by the other paper that you got today. Um, okay, so I'm gonna peel back my orange because I'm definitely gonna go through a lot of it. So the first thing that I'm gonna think about is my composition and the rule of thirds. I just kind of have that built into my mind. Um, and I am checking to make sure I'm using the more textured side of my paper. And I'm going to just gesture sketch and using the orange um, oil pastel, my round. Do you recommend us to use the more textured side? I would. Oh. It's not going to be, it's not going to make or break your drawing if you use the smoother side. Either side is fine. I just find when you're working with pastels, it's nice to have that texture. All right, so I got my first gourd put in. Now I'm going to admit something folks. I am not drawing the most challenging um, composition subject matter. I will admit that and that's okay. Just pick something that feels fun to you. That's, that's the main goal here. Alright so I got my two overlapping gourds. I think I'll even kind of identify their stems. There's my pumpkin stems. Now I'm going to establish, I might switch to the navy blue or not even navy blue, blue to do the background here. I'm just going to kind of etch in or sketch in, gesture sketch in what I'm seeing in the background, which is a diagonal line for the edge of the table that this is sitting on. And then there's just some kind of interesting geometric shapes happening in the background that I'm going to work with. That will be lighter eventually, but just using the blue to do my sketching. All right, and then I'm also going to identify where my cast shadow is going. Because you definitely, in my image, you can see a strong light source coming on the left side of my gourds. And then I have, I have like, oh, it's kind of interesting. I'm going to include it too. This is that's sitting on like a wooden, looks like a wooden picnic table. So I've got lines like going in here, going through it. You sure me. All right. Okay. So here is my just basic sketch. So I didn't use pencil, I used oil pastel for that. Now, like I did yesterday, I'm just going to fill in my gourds. And you know about like, one, like layer one, it's pretty thin, looks a lot like crayon. Then layer two will start to kind of fill in the tooth of the paper. I'm going to kind of do both. I'm kind of realizing I made this gourd a little bigger than it needed to be. So I'm shrinking it down. So here's layer one. Okay, the next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to go ahead and identify the dark value in my gourds and I'm this time instead of doing the blue right away I don't know if I did yesterday I can't remember I'm using more the dark brown to put that dark value in okay. 
And then I'll even make it even a richer, darker with the blue. But I liked kind of the subtlety of that. I'm going to zoom in a little bit more so you can see my pumpkins kind of coming into. I'll do the same thing in the back here too quick. So I have a few here. Now I'm going to grab the blue and make it more obvious, the darker value. This will be the last thing you turn into canvas will be your finished product here of the oil pastel. So we'll work on this today and then tomorrow. And then for folks, if you're still working on finishing up your Project 3 slideshows, that should be your priority first. And then you can kind of join us. And then I don't know what we'll do for our last day together. Something. All right, and then I'm kind of developing my both both of the little pumpkin gourds at the same time, going back and forth. Just looking at the dark value. Be sure to be putting yourself in the habit of looking at your reference photo about 80% and you're drawing 20% so that you are being observational with your drawing. kind of work on the you sure me all right so here are my here's what I have so far pretty much that mid local color which is orange and then using the dark brown and dark blue for now to hit those like darker values. Now I'm going to go back, kind of wondering, I might, okay, so here's some highlights. I think I'm going to use that more peach color, and then of course the white, which I'm going to peel back because we're going to probably go through a lot of that. I don't know if I'll be able to make this drawing last two days. I might want to draw another. Maybe I'll do a landscape tomorrow. Okay, so I got my white ready. I have peach ready. I'm going to work with the orange. I found the yellow to not be super useful yesterday, but maybe I can get something going here. I'm going to try the yellow first just to see what happens on some of those highlights. It's okay. I don't know not finding it to do a ton. Oh, kind of is working. So I'm just thinking about the highlights right now on this. I know I'm going to have my most success with the white and possibly the peach. But let's see if I can get some of this yellow to stick. And then I'll just gently kind of roll away any of that excess. So for my juniors and sophomores, I'll tell you once, like if you're interested in continuing your experience with drawing, um, 
we work with chalk pastel and oil pastel so you get a little more exposure to that we do a different type of printmaking called intaglio which is a real interesting experience um, but yeah so i just kind of wanted to give you a little bit of exposure to the oil pastel because um, it, you know it can take it can take some multiple attempts to really find your comfort with it so just be in a mindset that you're just experimenting and learning it's not Oops, I got white on here. Um, it's not about being completely prof proficient immediately. I mean, it may take take some attempts. I'm working on my dark shadow, which looks very electric blue when I look up on the screen. But I'll tone it down with the brown. And then maybe I'll use a little bit of black at the end. Kind of see. So now I'm going to add the dark, the dark brown on top of the blue, and it does do a nice job of toning that dark value down. I have to mix more. These little tiny drawings would be real sweet, just matted and framed too. like this like a still life a lot of times like doing two two gourds like I'm doing there isn't a lot that I'm saying to an audience beyond just kind of the seasonal observation of a still life with like gourdy pumpkins in it um, and that's I think we're in a good space to just kind of be kind of thinking more in terms of technical mark making and dealing with um, creating a three-dimensional drawing but I would say I'm not saying a lot to my audience in this composition. And I mean, and that's okay. I mean, I'm just getting you guys kind of just introduced to the medium where if we had more time, then we would develop this further, um, you know, so that you could be kind of developing more of like an artist, an artist voice in into your work. But we've kind of gotten to the point where we can spend a little time just drawing something aesthetic. So I'm getting those dark cast shadows happening. We'll kind of clean up the hard edges by putting in lighter value. I'm yet to use this. Maybe I'll use it now. Don't forget to kind of, you can do some kind of pushing your oil pastel in with your blending stick that kind of creates a little more control as well I'm going to add, I'm going to head back over, well, no, I think I'll work on this shadow back here just to stay kind of even with my mark making choices.
Okay, I'm going to be honest, I just added the tiniest amount of black right underneath this first gourd in the front just to create a darker, like the darkest, like cast shadow underneath the um, first gourd here. So I did a very minimal amount, but I wanted to create just like a dip, like so it's a little bit darker than the rest of the shadow. Then the rest of the shadow is going to be just a mixture of the blue and brown. I'll do the same thing in the back gourd, just right underneath it. And then taking my blending stick, kind of working it in just to reinforce that darkest value. Whoops. Okay, let's try to try to tone that down. Okay. <laughs> now I got my shadows kind of evened out for the time for the moment. I'll probably come back and adjust them. I am going to go back to my pumpkins and kind of work on getting each section to really be kind of more of that curved round appearance which will probably be a combination of the blue and then hitting it up the highlight even more I'm going to try this like peach oh yeah that that's a nice that's a nice combo. To use these blending sticks on the sandpaper, you just kind of rotate it and sand it so that you get kind of all the, whoops. Yeah, this is, uh, now you gotta taste what it's like to hang out with me. I, the reason why I don't do sports. Yesterday I almost dumped a whole bowl of hot chili in my lap and knocked my glasses off simultaneously. It was like, what the heck? I cannot explain myself. I just go, yep, that's just who I am. I was grateful that I didn't. I caught the um, chili, not the glasses. You know, it was like, I don't know. I need to have less going on mentally, I think. That makes me feel really great being compared to your grandmother, but that's where I'm headed, folks. I am going to be a fantastic grandma someday. It's just going to totally, it's all going to make sense. <laughs> I can't wait. I mean, I can, but I look forward to the day of being a grandmother. If, if I get to be one, I guess. If I don't, I'll just have to, like, adopt grandchildren. <laughs> all right, so I'm finding with this... Um, this peach color works out really well for the highlights of my pumpkin. So if you're trying to do highlights, don't um, or don't forget to try this additional over just the white because it's, it's a warmer, it's a warmer highlight, and it just really is doing a nice job. And the more layers you put down, really, the more uh, rich and saturated it's going to look, like a painting. Hmm. Oh, I need a little bit, I think, of blue right here.
so yellow there. I want to try to get the yellow. some yellow just to just to try to get some more yellow tone my yellow seems to like kind of rub it all away it doesn't it's not as soft you will notice some of the colors they just are softer and they just kind of melt onto your paper more than maybe say the yellow I'm going to add a little white here. Don't forget like to use kind of that like contour line to make your drawing have that three-dimensional appearance. All right, I need to get more. this side of the I'm going to try to add a little bit of green to the stem and then blend it see how that pans out not too bad Okay, how are you two doing here up front with with no drawings in front of your Alex, Jacob? Alex. When are you gonna get your paper out? You're not watching people play pool, are you? No. I'm supposed to be leaving shortly, Oh, do you have a pass? Well, I'm waiting for the pass. Oh, so that's what's happening. You have something else going on. Well, I mean, waiting goes by faster when you're engaged in doing something. And this is easy cleanup. I just broke it. I'm going to do a little swing around and see how people are doing. Um, so everyone, I am really finding that this blending stick is a really, really great helper, so don't neglect it um, in, your, in 
you're experimenting. And the goal really should be, by the time you're kind of getting towards the end of your drawing, you can see thick chunks of oil pastel kind of being left on your drawing. Um, so if you completely smooth it out constantly, it's gonna have more of that airbrushed look um, that kind of reads flat. So if your goal is to kind of get more painterly and three-dimensional, you're gonna wanna leave bigger chunks of it onto your um, paper. gets to kind of have these chill chill moments
Will you show me? Still do things like turn your paper so you have a better angle. I'm just kind of turning it so I can kind of create some of those hard edges. And All right. So I am using um, like kind of the negative space around the pumpkin to create kind of a create that harder edge I find when I draw in the background it's oftentimes it's out of focus and it's a lot more abstract and just more about like kind of light areas dark areas things aren't so much in focus Add those values. Yeah, I don't know, you guys. This might just be a one-day project. And we can do something different tomorrow. We definitely need to like clean out your drawers, get all that ready to go so you can take home your work. I don't know if I feel like it's been a it's been a quick term. Am I surprised it's over? Kind of wishing I had like a. We don't. Oh, we do have a purple. I'm. A, I'm actually gonna. Okay, I forgot to tell you guys. Purple can really serve as a really great kind of additional dark. Um, like you can add it to some of your shadows, and it creates some depth as well. Um, so sometimes I use that in some of the darkest parts of my shadow as well. You know, working it into this background area. Get this blended in. I'm basically using the blending stick here for that one layer just to get it to push it into the tooth of the paper.
Mm-hmm. 